Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu alhaq أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِ بِرَبِّكَ أَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ مَوْلَانَا الْعَظِيمِ وَبَلَّغَنَا رَسُولُهُ النَّبِيُّ الْكَرِيمِ وَنَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَمِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ وَالشَّاكِرِينَ والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We find ourselves in these unusual and challenging times but by the grace of Allah connected to the book of Allah and to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم And as ever in times of happiness, in times of sadness, whatever kind of challenges we face, it is the book of Allah, the Quran, which provides us with insight and understanding as to how to understand the situation we are in and how to face up to its challenges. And this verse of the Quran, which I presented before you, is from chapter 41, Surah Hamim al sajda verse 53, in which Allah Ta'ala says, Sanurihim ayatina. We will show them our signs. We will show them our signs. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi in the horizons wa fi anfusihim and inside themselves. Hatta until yatabayyana lahum. It becomes absolutely crystal clear to them annahul haq. That it, that this Quran. This message of truth, which the Prophet ﷺ came with, is the absolute truth. Haq. And is it not sufficient? Birabbika concerning your Lord, Annahu ala kulli shayin shaheed, that Allah is a witness over all things. And so in this verse of the Quran, this was revealed towards the end of a surah, which was a Makkan surah. And one of the main themes of the Makkan surahs is the reality of the Day of Judgment. This was a point which the Makkan audience had trouble accepting. They believed in God, but they did not believe in God as being unique as a God. And they did not believe in resurrection and accountability. And so this surah highlights to them that Allah presents signs for them, for them to understand that this world that we are living in is in his control and it is sustained by his command that he is Rabb. He is Rabb. He is the sustainer of this earth. It is in his control and when he wishes, he can cause whatever is going on on this earth to terminate. And the day of judgment is a reality which has to be faced. And so he says, Sanurihim ayatina. In the Quran, ayat are of two kinds. One is the stories of nations which have passed, and the other is natural phenomena that we see around us. The stories of the past prophets are heard by the ears and the natural phenomena are seen with the eyes. And this is why Allah Ta'ala frequently in, in, invokes the senses, inviting people to listen and inviting them to see what is apparent before them, what has reached them. And then he says to them that they should reflect. Then they should use their intellect, which is also a God-given sense, to think to process the information which reaches them through their senses, through their sight and their ears, and to think, to use their aql, and to reflect, to do tadabbur. 
and to think about the reality of God as the creator of the universe, God as the sustainer of the universe, and God as the one who has the power to create and therefore has the power to terminate creation and to resurrect once more and to hold all his creatures accountable on the day of judgment. This is the invitation of the Quran when he says, Sanurihim, we shall show them. So they should see Ayatina, our signs, fil afaqi, in the horizons, wa fi anfusihim. Today, as science progresses, we see more and more of the beauties and the wonder of space and the universe in which we are like a grain like an atom suspended amongst so many billions of celestial bodies flowing as Allah Ta'ala says, each in a prescribed orbit. And then when we look inside ourselves, again, research on DNA and cell composition, things which could not be seen with the naked eye are now becoming apparent because of cameras and magnification and what we can see inside ourselves. And all of these are signs of God's creation, signs for people to see, not only with their eyes, but with their hearts. In the end, it is the hearts which accept or refuse to believe and refuse to accept what is apparent. So Allah Ta'ala says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْأَفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْأَرْضِ And يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ means that it will become absolutely clear to them. Now, sometimes when we look at past nations, we think Thamud, they had a camel, which was a miracle. It seems dramatic. And Fir'aun, Musa alayhi salam, throws down his stick and it turns into a snake. It seems magical. It seems so apparent. We live in our cities, in our dwellings, and in modern life, it is very hard to see these realities sometimes. But now, Allah has given us a very stark reality, something that we cannot fail to appreciate. This is dramatic, and this is apparent. يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ It will become crystal clear to them. Whether or not people heed this warning or this message, that is up to them. That is to do with their heart and what they are prepared to accept. What, we are, what the heart is prepared to accept, but from the perspective of the signs being sent, that is crystal clear. A virus is so small that it cannot be seen with the naked eye and it needs to be magnified thousands of times with a microscope even to be seen. For something so small to bring an entire planet to a halt, the work and the relaxation of the people of an entire planet to be put on hold by a creature which is so small that it cannot be seen with the naked eye is something that really should be a cause for reflection. And it shows us that Allah retains control. He said in the Quran in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord and the sustainer of all of the worlds. Rabb meaning that everything is sustained by his command. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, the one whose gifts everyone depends on to survive. Ar-Rahim, the merciful, who allows people to continue and to have more time even when they disobey him. And who is merciful in his reward towards those who heed his message. Maliki Yawmiddin, sovereign Lord of the Day of Judgment. Allah is the Lord of every day. And the Lord of every world, but he says, Maliki Yawmiddin, on the day of judgment, everyone will know that he is Malik, even those who denied him here. And that's why he says, Limanil Mulk Al Yawm, whose is the kingdom on that day? 
Lillahi al-wahid al It is for Allah, the one, the vanquisher. Then his power will become apparent. But here in this world, he gives us some insights into that situation. Just like at night, he puts us to sleep and he wakes us in the morning. It gives us some insight into the way that Allah puts a person to sleep in his grave and resurrects him on the day of judgment. Today, the halting of the work of a planet by a virus which is too small to be seen gives us some insight into the power of Allah. How all of life, all of what goes on on this planet is in his grasp. Your computer gets a virus. How do you feel? You panic. You panic because your data is in the control of someone else. You feel helpless. You feel at their disposal and their beck and call because your data is in their control. How do you feel when a virus has you by the throat? How do you feel when a virus has your breathing in its control? When Allah holds the life and the breath of his human beings in his control with a creature so small they cannot see it. This should make it crystal clear to people. يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ How much he is in control of our lives. He says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to him than his jugular vein. This should definitely make it clear that Allah holds our lives in his very hand. How close he is to us and how he controls our very breathing. A blessing which we take for granted. Did we ever stop to think and to thank Allah for the breathing, for the breath that we take in? for the lungs which take in that breath, the oxygen that we depend upon, and breathe out the carbon dioxide that would have poisoned us if it had stayed in our bodies, and its connection to the heart and the flowing of blood around our body that keeps us alive. Do we thank him with every breath? And yet when that breath is withheld by his command, we realize what power, what awesome power lies at Allah's disposal, that all of the people of the world are in his grasp. He said in Surah Al-Zumar, verse 67, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They did not appreciate Allah to the extent that they should have appreciated him. وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And the earth in its entirety shall be in his control on the day of resurrection, in his grip, in his grasp on the day of resurrection. And the heavens shall be rolled up in his right hand. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. He is glorified and exalted above whatever they associate with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. As I mentioned before, all of sovereignty is in Allah's grasp in this world. But on the day of judgment, it will be apparent for all to see. And this is why he says, وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْخِيَامَةِ The earth in its entirety will be in his grasp on the day of judgment. Although it is in his grasp today, because on the day of judgment, we will see it. So he's, that's why he said, مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ And here he said, قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْخِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينَهِ In his right hand. The right hand means... It symbolizes power and control. This is the grasp. The right hand indicates power. It means that all of the heavens and the earth will be in his grasp and it will be apparent to everyone. So here Allah is giving us a temporal earthly insight into the power that will become apparent to us all on the day of judgment. He says in Surah Al-Waqiyah, Verse 86 to 7. فَلَوْ لَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَ هَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ 
He mentions the time when the dying man is in his final moments and all of his loved ones are looking on, helpless, unable to intervene. And he says, فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ If you think that you are not in the control of another, تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Then put back the life into him if you are truthful. If your claim is true that you are not answerable to anyone, you are in control of anyone, put the life back into a body from which Allah has taken the life. No one can do this. Now, one of the sad realities of this situation is that people are dying alone. Some people are dying in their homes and being discovered later. Some people die in hospitals but not surrounded by their loved ones as is normal, but alone, unable to be with their loved ones at the moment of death. And this is very sad for all concerned, but it reminds us of one reality that the life which Allah takes away, no one can give back. We are definitely in His control. We are not masters of our own destiny. No one can give back the life which Allah has taken. Life and death is in His grasp. He is the one who created death and life to test you which of you will do good deeds? So this life and this death, all of this is in his grasp. And it reminds us of this reality that on this earth, we collect wealth and we are surrounded by our loved ones and we are busy with our affairs. But when we return to Allah, we will go alone. And we have to prepare for a day when we will stand before our Lord and answer for how we spent our time on this earth. And we will have to answer for ourselves. So we will return to him alone and we will have to answer to him alone. So think that we have to build our connection with Allah now. Think that Allah, as was mentioned in the verse, إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ Allah is a witness over all things. So this is what we have to understand, that every aspect of our life is being witnessed by our Creator who will hold us to account for every action and everything that we utter on this world. What will we say when we meet our Maker? All of these realities lead us to the first conclusion of the talk today, that as a human race, we must learn to be humble. And we must understand the limits of humanity. That we are still in the control of our creator. And humans, with all of their progress and their technology and their endeavor, are still in the grasp of a beneficent Lord and rely upon his generosity and his munificence for every breath which they take and every moment of this life which he grants to us. And that is his gift. And for that, we should be eternally grateful. And the best form of shukr is that we spend that life in accordance with his wishes, obedient to his command, worshipping him and showing compassion to his creation. And this is the reason that Allah Ta'ala created us, to worship him and to show compassion to his creation. And we will talk more about that as we move on in the talk. Secondly, Allah Ta'ala gives us further lessons through these kind of challenging situations. We see the importance and the sanctity of life and we see how our existence is interdependent. Now we are being asked to enter into social distancing. And it is only through our collective endeavor that we are able to save lives. All of us have to work together in order to save the lives of all of us. We realize we are, our actions have consequences and each of us can benefit or harm the other. Now Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran in verse 32 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا So he said that we prescribed for Bani Israel that whoever takes a soul unlawfully causing corruption on the earth it is as if he has destroyed all of mankind and whoever saves one life it is as if he has saved all of mankind and normally we might think how is it possible for our actions to have such far-reaching consequences but now it becomes apparent that all of us as a community have to work together to save lives and if as a community we do not work together then the repercussions in society are immense one person's actions can have an effect on thousands and we see you have all seen the charts of how much this virus can spread as a result of the actions of one individual who is careless so all of us have to work together this is a collaborative effort we have to work together and together our actions will have the effect of saving all of humanity or our negligence can have the effect of destroying large swathes of the population and it is very important now that this virus also has shown us another reality that we have to focus our resources not on taking lives but on saving lives many countries in the world if you look at the biggest component of their national budgets this is spent on what is called defense and which involves purchase of weapons and their use in war and now it is apparent that larger budgets need to be spent on medical research on the health system on the prevention of illness on the prevention of disease the research and innovation which is invested in for the sake of developing new weapons to destroy lives should instead be redirected and reprioritized towards research on medical research and the saving of lives and the preservation of health so this is another priority which must be addressed by the current situation this is another reality another ref- uh, point that we should reflect upon and readjust our priorities away from military spending towards spending on health and the saving of lives and research into health into vaccinations and also into the prevention of disease the treatment of disease and the care and treatment of symptoms which develop in illnesses such as these so we talked about allah's control we talked about giving thanks for the blessings and we talked about the sanctity of the life and the need to work collaboratively as a community to save lives my next point is about materialism Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran in Surah Al-Dhariyat verse 56 وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We did not create jinn and mankind except that they should submit to me لِيَعْبُدُونَ meaning that they should worship me and they should be obedient to me Despite this man has been engaged in an endless quest for the acquisition of material resources and the generation and the acquisition of wealth and possessions material possessions of this world as a plan as a species our exploitation of the planet has exceeded boundaries known to previous generations and now for the first time there has been a pause factories are closed normal production processes are stopped the morning commute has come to an end for many of us normal activities have been put on hold and now 
one is forced to reflect on the way that society conducts itself. The daily rat race, the daily acquisition of wealth, and the running of factories, irrespective of an understanding of the level of pollution and the consequences on the planet in, for future generations, what we are being, leaving behind. Over-exploitation of the resources, the natural resources. So this situation, if someone had said that we will put everything on hold for three months to reflect on these realities, it would have seemed incredible. It would have seemed impossible. It would have seemed like something we could never do, but it is something that we are doing now. Something that would have seemed unimaginable has become our reality now. As a community, as a nation, and as a race, this has become our reality now, that life has been put on hold. The normal life that we know has been put on hold. Only what is essential is allowed to proceed. The delivery of food, medical supplies. We have gone back to basics. We are beginning to appreciate now what we actually need to survive. How much do we actually need in order to survive? And how much is surplus? So this is forcing us to rebalance the way we spend our time and the way we focus our priorities. Now the mosques have been closed, but that doesn't mean that prayer has been closed. This is an opportunity for prayer to be diverted back to our homes. For many of us, we would spend our days and our nights going to work and the older people in the house would frequent the mosques and the children would grow up in the houses not seeing anyone pray. But now there is an opportunity for families to perform the adhan. And the adhan is one of the means by which diseases are held at bay. So do the adhan in your houses. And this, this is one of the means by which we can dispel the disease and the illnesses which are prevailing now, that we do adhan in our homes. And we can establish the prayer as families, as family units, and we can stand together collectively in prayer, in worship. The time which we might have spent, we wake up and we rush off to the commute in the morning, that time can be used to recite Quran and to perform collective prayer in the households. The same in the evening, the time that we would have been maybe on the train coming home, that time can be spent reciting Qur'an and performing collective prayer at home. The children who are growing up now, they will remember this time. They will remember this as a time when collective acts of worship were established in the house. People read Qur'an, they made dua, they did salah in congregation. They will remember this time because it will be unique, because people were forced to divert from their normal practices and routine and to revert towards a spiritual life, and to tone down their materialism, to tone down their material acquisition, to focus only on what is essential, and instead to spend their time imploring and seeking from Allah. So these children will grow up seeing these things, inshallah, and they will acquire a good example. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah An-Nur, verse 36 to 37, فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعَ وَيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ يُسَبِّهُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ In mosques is sometimes said in translation, but the word which is used here in the Qur'an is فِي بُيُوتٍ in houses. Now some Mufassireen said that this was the Kaaba and Bayt al-Maqdis and these Masjid al-Nabawi, these kind of houses. And others said these are the houses of Allah, these are the mosques. But some of the commentators said one interpretation is buyutin means all houses. So today we see that the salah is established in all houses, fi buyutin. It doesn't say only that salah is reserved for the mosques. No, fi buyutin. Any house which is inhabited, salah should be there. Fi buyutin, in houses. Adin Allahu, where Allah has ordered, and turfa, that there be raised. وَيُذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُهُ And his name should be mentioned there. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ 
and he should be glorified in it. Bil ghudui wal asal, morning and night. Now this is an opportunity for us to act on this verse of the Quran, that Allah's name should be praised. When the Prophet ﷺ endured difficulties in the early years of propagation, how did Allah teach him to overcome his challenges, to divert his attention from his worries? He said, Sabbihisma Rabbika al-A'la. Glorify the name of your Lord most, most high. Rise above your earthly worries. Sabbihisma Rabbika al-A'la. So here Allah is reminding us to raise his, the, his remembrance in our houses and to glorify his name. Tasbih of Allah. I already said to do the Adhan. Also do the Tasbih of Allah. This is also something which dispels disease and illnesses and challenges and tribulations. These are all tools by which we confront the challenges that we face. And Allah and his messenger have reminded us of these resources at our disposal. So we mentioned the control of Allah, thanking Allah for his blessings, learning to be humble before him, before his power, the sanctity of life and working together to save lives and rebalancing our lives away from materialism towards spirituality and the remembrance of Allah in our houses. Now, let us look at another lesson that Allah Ta'ala teaches us through these kind of challenges. We know that inequality and alienation has become increasingly rife in society. We know that at the moment there is a migrant crisis caused by wars and poverty, which has displaced people from their homes and from their own homelands. And the reaction to that has been often to close the doors to these people and to look down on people. As soon as someone is needy, we feel that we are somehow superior to them. We see around the world that doors have been closed for them, hearts have been closed for them. But now Allah Ta'ala has afflicted the whole world with one affliction. Up till now, if we saw something on the news, we would think this is happening in a faraway place. This is something remote from us. This is something distant from us. We would find it hard to identify with the problems faced by those people. But now the same affliction is afflicting people in all parts of the world. And so they are able to empathize with each other. They are able to be concerned about each other. They are able to learn from each other. They are all part of one problem. Through this, Allah Ta'ala reminds us that we are one people. We are all human beings. There is no sense in alienation or in arrogance, thinking that we are superior or that we are somehow insulated. The problems which come to others can also come to us. If today we are not prepared to help others, tomorrow we should not expect others to help us if we face those same situations. These kind of challenges remind us of these harsh realities. Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter 49, verse 13, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We surely created you from a man and a woman. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا And we made you into tribes and branches. لِتَعَارَفُوا So that you come to know one another. Not so that you alienate from each other, but so that you come to know one another. Knowing each other means to respect each other, to assist each other, to empathize with each other, to share in sadness and to share in happiness, to identify with each other. لِتَعَارَفُوا Now, people are being forced by these challenges to work together collaboratively. You see the World Health Organization sending out broadcasts every day. Everyone has the same problem. So they have to address the problem collectively. They have to share data. They have to share best practice. They have to share research. They have to share insights and expertise because everyone has the same problem. No one is above this virus. Illness does not discriminate. The virus does not discriminate. There is no point people discriminating against each other because they are going to be faced by the same problems. People from different races and backgrounds, they have to understand 
that they are all facing a common issue here and they have to appreciate that they have common goals and they have to learn from each other. People have to rethink their prejudice. People who would have thought that they don't need immigrants, people who may have been prejudiced against Muslims, for example. Now we see five Muslim British doctors who have died treating people of this virus. Five Muslim British doctors. And they are amongst the first of the doctors, the medical staff to die in this country, to give their lives for this cause. That reality, how can that be lost on people? And today we have news of a nurse as well, a mother also who has given her life treating people in this situation. May Allah have mercy on all of them and reward them abundantly for this service that they have performed and may he give them the rank of the shuhada for giving their life in the service of the community. And we should be proud of what their achievements and we should appreciate that Allah Ta'ala sometimes he subjects people to challenges and he doesn't burden them beyond their capability. But as the hadith of the Prophet tells us, Allah Ta'ala sometimes subjects a person to challenges and when he is successful, he gives them a rank which they could not have achieved without that challenge which he gave them. Through their own good deeds, they could not have achieved that rank. But because of their sabr, their patience and steadfastness, when he subjects them to a challenge, then Allah Ta'ala gives them a rank which they could not have dreamed of. You see now, this illness is causing people to die with the rank of shaheed. These are ordinary people who may have not been able to achieve these ranks otherwise. And this also corrects a reality for us as well, that people in this country, people all over the world are able to see now that Muslims are being seen now as people not who take innocent lives, but people who save innocent lives. Here we see individuals giving their life to save the lives of others. This is the rank of a shaheed. These are the people that we are proud to call members of our community. May Allah have mercy on them and they have had mercy on his creation. You see, in all these lessons which Allah Ta'ala has given us and many, many more, which I have not time here to go into in detail, all of these are lessons are taught through one challenge, one virus, one virus which is so small that the eye cannot see it. Allah is the creator and his plan is complex. He speaks to us on so many levels through these kind of signs, things which are there to be seen by those who are not blind. So many lessons there are for us to learn from the situation that we find ourselves in. So how should we deal practically now with the situation we are in. As you know, there are many awrad that we can read. And in particular, one hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is that we should read Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama'i wa huwa samiul alim three times in the morning and three times in the evening. And this will keep us safe from every form of harm by day and by night, inshallah. So please read this. Bismillah al-ladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama'i wa huwa samiul alim three times morning and night as well as the adhan which I also mentioned to you and the tasbih of Allah always doing subhanallah, subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanallah al-ladheem, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al The good thing about this last tasbih, the tasbih of Yunus alayhi salam is this also contains istighfar. Istighfar is also another means of removing afflictions. So the more abundance with which we can do istighfar, the better at this time. Also we have dua shifa which the Prophet ﷺ taught us, Allahumma rabban nas adhib al-bas, ishfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifa'uk, shifa'un la yugadir saqma. We can read this, and we can read the now the thing, wala uzbira bil falaq, and wala uzbira bil nas, and also the fatiha, and we can blow on our hands and wipe this over our bodies, inshallah. So this will also be a form of spiritual protection for us. Also to rely on Allah, hasbunallah wa na'mal wakil, na'mal mawla wa na'mal nasir. 
and to maintain the recitation of Quran in our homes and to be connected with the teachings of the Quran. Now in Haram Mosque, uh, four to five khatams of the Quran are performed daily by those who are contributing. So you may join this or you can individually or in your communities establish the practice of reciting the Quran to show Allah that we are connected to his book and that we are hopeful of his mercy in these difficult times. Read durood on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Please Allah ta'ala, remember it is the command of Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina manu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alayhi Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi. When we send durood in abundance on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with all due respect, this is a form of obedience to the command of Allah. And this is a source of pleasing Allah. So this is to do with our connection with Allah, Allah, make sure that we are connected to Allah, the creator. The second is social assistance. This is compassion towards God's creation. This is another source of invoking Allah's mercy. And this is very, very important that Allah has given us this opportunity to come towards him. But he has also given us this opportunity to come towards each other. This is very important. This is a very important lesson. That this is a time for communities to come together. Allah has taught us how to love each other again, how to work together again, and how to overcome our differences once again. This is a time to turn towards the needs of others. You and I, we are worrying because we can't find enough delivery, slot, delivery slots from the supermarket. Is this a problem? Is this a problem? To us, this is a problem. We expect our shopping to arrive Online, we click a computer, we expect the shopping to arrive at our door. We don't even have to go out to get it. But we are concerned because we can't find the delivery slot to do this. Which means that we may have to venture out to get some shopping or we may have to make do with what we have at home. But in some countries, in some situations, even in this country, there will be some people who do not have money to buy food with. There are people whose livelihoods have been destroyed. There are people who used to earn enough money during the day to feed their families at night. They don't have a lockdown to them means that their means of livelihood has gone. They don't have online shopping in some cases. In there, they may not have access to the material things they need at all. So don't forget these people. Put your problems into perspective. Yes, we have some difficulties, but our problems are not like the problems of others. Remember them now. Invoke Allah's mercy not only through what you read, but through what you do. Give your zakah. You don't have to wait for Ramadan. Give the niyyah if you want that Allah, I'm giving this zakah now to save the lives of your creation. Let him decide how much he wants to reward you. Don't wait for Ramadan. People are dying now. They need your help now. This is Sha'ban al-Mu'adham. And the Prophet ﷺ said, people do not know the value of this month of Sha'ban. And so he reminded us of the value of Shaban. Do your good deeds in Shaban. Give zakah, give sadaqah, give khairat. Do whatever you can to send money in this country or in other countries to help people. That is your finance. And remember, Allah Ta'ala gave this challenge to the people, but he gave us these months of Rajab, Shaban and Ramadan. These challenges have come to us in three months which are the month of Allah, the month of the Prophet ﷺ, and the month of the community. So Allah Ta'ala has given us these blessed times, these sacred months in which we may come back to him and close ranks again as a united loving community and work together collaboratively. He has given us these three blessed months in order to do this. Give whatever you can give from your material wealth, but not just financially. You have these as well. You have hands, you have a body. What can you do as volunteers? What can you do? Can you give your time? Can you make effort? What can you do to help people? Are you phoning people who are at home to see if they're okay? Have you phoned your loved ones? Maybe people you were estranged with. Have you phoned to see if they are okay? Now we realize we need each other. We are not alone. We are not independent. We do need each other. Have you phoned people who are elderly, who are living alone to see if they are okay? Have you connected with your community? Haram Mosque now is running a volunteer service called Helping Hands to see if there are people in your community who are not able to go out and get shopping, essential shopping for themselves. Perhaps you can offer your assistance, some of your time, some of your effort. Perhaps you can set aside worrying about your own needs 
and your own worries and look to helping others. And this is an excellent way psychologically of making yourself feel better as well. Because for a moment you put aside your own cares and you feel satisfaction from having helped someone else. You can do something. This is psychologically very good for you. Allah Ta'ala taught the Prophet Sallallahu in Surah Al-Duha to think about how Allah had taken care of his needs and then to turn toward the needs of others who are socially disadvantaged. Don't turn away those who come to you for assistance and mention always the favors of Allah upon you. And this will engender a positive attitude and help you to overcome your challenges. So think about how you can help others. In one hadith, the Prophet said, this is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Hurairah, whoever removes a grief from a believer from amongst the sorrows of this life, Allah will remove a grief from him amongst the sorrows of the day of resurrection. Whoever brings ease to one in difficulty, Allah will make it easy for him in this life and the hereafter. And whoever covers a Muslim, Allah will cover him in this life and the hereafter. Remember, these are hadith about helping others. They are not only restricted to Muslims. These are hadith about the benefits of helping people. If you help people, Allah will help you in this life and in the next life. So this is how the Prophet ﷺ taught us. In another narration, Imam Bukhari narrates in Adab al-Mufrad, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas ta'ala, who says, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, a man is not a believer who fills his stomach while his neighbor is hungry. So this is a time for thinking not only about what you are eating, what you are enjoying, but what your neighbor is enduring. Share whatever you have. If you are, have a little bit of shortage of something, you may still be able to manage if you share with another, or if you have extra of something, perhaps you can share those resources with some of the people around you if they are in need. Also, if somebody owes you money, this may be a time to show leniency towards them if you are able to do so. And this is one of the ahkam in the Quran, to be lenient towards debtors who owe you money. And this is a time when you see that people are in hardship, you give them ease. So this is another thing that we can do. Show empathy for others. All of these things, these lessons that we have reflected on, Allah Ta'ala, through his signs, through his signs, through the lessons of past nations, through the natural phenomena, such as this disease, such as other things which afflict us or other things that we benefit from, he shows us his signs as a means for us to reflect as a means for us to reevaluate our priorities, as a means for us to rethink our values. And all of these should be the result of these kind of challenges. We have now learnt the benefits of hygiene. We have a regime for external purification now. We wash our hands for 20 seconds. We wash our hands when we go out. We wash our hands when we come back. We wash our hands when we eat. All of these things we have learnt now. Because of this contagious germ, we have been forced to learn how important it is to maintain external purity. But remember, there is also an inner purification. These signs of Allah, ayatina, as he says, our signs, they are also a cause for inner purification. This is also a time to purify ourselves of arrogance that we are humans and we have achieved so much. No, we are in his grasp. He has control of us by the jugular vein. He has control of our breathing. We need him. He sustains us. We are indebted to him. We should thank him. We should be obedient to him. This is purification from arrogance. This is doing shukr rather than denying him and his mercy and his benevolence. Then it is a respect for the sanctity of life as well to know that we are a community and that our actions have effects on other people, on their lives. Then it is a purification of our excessive materialism, our continuous quest for more and more production of generation of wealth and refocusing ourselves, balancing ourselves to use what we need and then to focus on spirituality and on helping others, connecting with Allah and connecting with his people, connecting with creation. Also, it is a cure for our arrogance and our sense of separation from other people. 
that we should overcome our prejudices and we should also understand empathy with other people. We should also look to be able to help others whenever we can and realize that Allah has connected all of us. We need others, even people who we thought that we were prejudiced against, they might tomorrow save our lives. This is a, harsh, a reality which Allah has forced people to acknowledge. All of these things have come to light through these challenges. By the means that Allah Ta'ala has brought this situation around, these realities have become apparent and public for everyone. On social media, on the news, everyone is able to see the same reality now. No one can say that we were not warned, we were not told, we did not have the chance. No. Until it becomes crystal clear to them. All of these things have been made crystal clear. What remains is for people to do is to see what Allah has made apparent. To listen to what Allah has in uh, order to be broadcast to the people of the world. These messages, these opportunities for reflection and for the hearts to be affected, for the actions to be affected and for people to take heed. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to reflect on what we have heard and the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May he keep everyone safe, whether they are in their homes or whether they are people who are out, who are out helping others or enabling normal life to continue through their essential contribution, whether they are health workers who are saving the lives of others. May Allah Ta'ala keep them safe. May he keep them in his protection and may he ease the troubles of the people of the world and may he teach them to focus on peace and not on war and to focus on the saving of lives and not on the taking of lives. And this is a great lesson for us to learn from these current events. And may Allah Ta'ala reward all of those who have given their lives, serving others and caring for others. And may he forgive all those whose lives have been taken. And may he give tawfiq to all those who he has given life to so that they may come back to him, that they may be, show compassion towards his creation as well in the moments that they have left. And may he give us death in the state of Iman. Make dua after reciting the Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmani rahim. Maliki yawm al-deen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-lazina namta alihim ghayri al-maghdubi alihim wa la-dhalin. Ameen. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقول يقول هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقول هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقول عوض برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقد ومن شر النفاثات في الأقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقول عوض برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. Oh Allah, we ask for the sake of this, the blessings of this Quran which has been recited, and the verses of the Quran which have been studied in this talk. Ya Allah, through their blessing and through the blessing of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we ask you, Ya Allah, to listen to our du'as. Ya Allah, to ease the troubles of the people of the world. Ya Allah, to keep them safe from harm and afflictions and from disease in particular and also to ease their hardship at this difficult time. Some of them have lost their means of earning rizq, Ya Allah, we ask you to expand their rizq. Ya Allah, some of them have lost loved ones, Ya Allah, we ask you to heal their hurt, Ya Allah, give them sabr and Ya Allah, give a high rank to those who have been taken away. Ya Allah, reward them abundantly for their sabr. Ya Allah, make the suffering a means of cleansing of their sins and a means of invoking your mercy upon your creation, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, teach us those things that you wish us to learn from this situation and teach us humility and teach us compassion and teach us to focus on the saving of life, Ya Allah, and teach us to be spiritual and to lose our obsession and our love with material things and to serve you as you wish to be served and to serve your community and your people as you wish us to serve them. Allahumma khafir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakirina wa unthana Allahumma man ahiyyatuhu minna fa ahiyya lal islam wa man tawfa'iyyatuhu minna fa tawafahu ala al-iman 
اللهم يسر أمورنا وأمور المسلمين في كل بلاد العالمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا والآخر وأنت خير الحافظين اللهم رب الناس أذهب البأس شفيا أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاء شفاء لا يغادر سقما بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمة الله التامة من شر ما خلق اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ربنا حب لنا من أزواج وذرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما وأفوذ أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد اللهم سل وسلم وزيد وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وأهل بيت الطاهرة يجمعين آمين يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين وسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته